Hey guys, and welcome back to Walker's Workshop. We've got a beautiful day outside today. The birds are chirping, the sun's shining. I think it's a good day to go outside and uh, talk tractors, or maybe tools, or a tool tractor. Yeah, let's go outside and see what we have. Okay guys, when I said tool tractor, I didn't literally mean, you know, a little tool shape like a tractor or something crazy like that I, now it's not what i was talking about but to any uh diy uh, kind of person tools are your most important thing you could possibly have um if you own a property um a tractor is going to be a necessity you know i don't have a lot of land here i only have about a one acre lot um but I think a subcompact tractor is probably the number one most handy tool that I own. And I own a bunch of tools, but this has probably got to be my favorite and by far the most used. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So, one of the most useful pieces of this tractor I'm going to talk about first is the front end loader. And, um, you know, it's not just for digging in piles of dirt. I use it for everything. Going around picking up sticks. I just so happen to heat my house uh, with coal. So, I use it, uh, I go get a load of coal in the dump trailer, I dump it out in the driveway. I use the front end loader and I scoop it and put it into my uh, holding bin for the coal. Um, firewood works perfect if you're out cutting firewood loading this guy up um, you know stacking it wherever you want it uh, I also mulch my flower beds every year I use about uh, four to five yards of mulch that that's a lot of mulch I go I get it I bring it back you could have it delivered um, but then I'm not breaking my back scooping it and scooping it you know whether it's you use a pitchfork or a shovel um, I just grab a hold of it, get this big old scoop, and I go and I spread it around the property. Um, of course, snow removal is also one of the biggest things I use it for. Um, there's a boatload of things. I, I mean, if you watched the last video where we worked on a generator, it makes a perfect workbench. Or a chair, if you're sitting around a campfire, just wheel it up there, park it, have a sit. There's a gazillion things it could be used for. Um, on my particular bucket, I welded some hooks and clevises. Um, I use it like for a crane, for picking stuff up all the time. Uh, if I want to load a washer and dryer in the back of a pickup truck, I go at it, I, I put the bucket underneath of it, put a strap on it, hold it fast, and I set it right up in the back. Anything like that. The lift capacity on this tractor um, is like 600, almost 700 pounds at full height, which is like six feet up in the air. There's no reason for that. Down low, where you're going to be using it most of the time, it's like a thousand pounds. Uh, like I said, I'm not here to talk about brands today or, you know, uh, comparing any of the tractors. For most typical homeowners, you know, do it yourself, guys, brand doesn't matter they all do a very great and a very comparable job uh, most of it comes down to your dealer that's close to you what's available um, and personal preference really okay so another big uh, misconception about subcompact tractors is their size you know you walk up to one at a dealership it's got all the bells and whistles on you know front end loader you know mower deck and stuff and they can look pretty intimidating. Um, but in all honesty, 
if you're just mowing the grass and you strip the the front end loader off uh, if you choose you know for a three-point implement or a backhoe or whatever you know you have that stripped off all you're using is the belly mower right I, I don't have a new you know lawn tractor anymore of course this took place of that um, I do have one of our other old projects that I'm working on should give you a pretty good idea uh, about the size they're really not that much difference don't let the size of something uh, of a subcompact tractor um, don't let that you know steer you away so <laughs> this this is uh, one of our old projects here we're gonna be working on we got a bunch of stuff to do to this guy if you look behind it now it's maybe it's hard to tell because I still do have the front end loader and the back go on but just the sheer size wise I mean right here I had the front tires are even you can see the front tire over there the tractor this front tire here is even the, the height is really I mean maybe the seats up a little higher back on the subcompact but as far as size wise I don't know what is that half of a wheel that's a 12 inch wheel that's six maybe 10 inches total length if you, if you block out the uh, you know the backhoe here so you're talking a foot maybe less than a foot this is an old tractor you know that I, that I'm comparing it to so in all honesty this might not be a fair comparison so the new tractors are about that size though so um, really like getting around the yard these new subcompact tractors have power steering you can take that thing i could whip it in circles around trees uh maybe not as easy as a zero steer mower um but super easy i mean just turns no problem the uh the turning radius on these guys is super tight uh my old tractor over here it doesn't turn half as well as this new one the new one also has four-wheel drive so if you're mowing on any type of inclines the four-wheel drive can help keep you stable um, keep you from tearing up your yard if you if the tires want to spin so don't let the size alone um, steer you away from something like this they come in different size mower decks some come with the 48 uh, 54 and a 60 inch if you don't need the big 60 inch mower deck I run a 54 um, it's the perfect size it, it, it takes a nice big um, bite out of the yard which then lowers my time while I'm mowing but it's not that big 60 inch mower deck to where maybe it's kind of clumsy you know getting around trees or or you know uh, around the flower beds or anything like that so I don't have one here to show you at the moment um, but I know a, the big thing right now a lot of people are doing is gardening. You know, um, the cost of everything is so expensive anymore. People are putting in their own food plots. Um, they're putting in gardens, vegetables, um, fruit trees, uh, anything. You know, they're building chicken coops, having fresh eggs. That's great. I love doing that kind of stuff. Um, the backhoe. Would come in handy if you want to build chicken coops you can you can dig out for your for your, to put your posts in the ground where you want to make your surround putting in a fence around your garden to keep the critters out um but a rototiller on the back of one of these things where you just drive along and it tills up the ground they're awesome they work so much better than getting beat around so bad walking behind a rototiller um so many different attachments you can get for the back of these a three-point hitch attachment you can get wood ch i mean you name it wood chippers snow blowers um, the wood chippers are great too you can make your own mulch if you got um, trees some deadfall some brush laying around um, throw that in a wood chipper make your own mulch put around your flowers or or you know your plants in the garden to keep the weeds down the limitations for these tractors are endless. Are they um, heavy equipment? You know, or is this thing going to work like like an excavator? You know, digging out foundations and stuff. Absolutely not. I 
guess you could do anything if you put your mind to it. Um, if you have the time to do it. But for the all around do it yourselfer that has a small piece of property to maintain, it, there is no better option than a subcompact tractor. Use it on a daily basis like a regular lawnmower. You use it when you got those, those funky projects, you know, that you might want to play in the dirt, digging in the dirt, um, plant gardens, you name it. There's so many things you can do. I highly recommend it for just about anybody. The only people that wouldn't use it, of course, are people who live in the, in the cities or, or, you know, have a really small yard. Um, but anything for an acre up to 10, a subcompact tractor is going to be your best friend. So, another thing to keep in mind with fuel prices on the rise, uh, right now we're getting carried away at like $5 a gallon. Um, these little diesel tractors are incredibly, incredibly efficient for fuel, um, for daily homeowner use. Um, this tractor has about a five gallon tank on it. Um, I use this can and I fill this tractor up once every other month you know um, I was filling up my craftsman that I had before I was filling it up every second time that I mowed so every two weeks um, I was putting about three gallons of gas in that thing this thing here uses less than one gallon per hour of use it's right around for me uh, mowing my one acre yard um, it's right around three quarters of a one gallon to mow my yard so I could mow my yard yeah that'd be about right about uh, almost two months uh, on a full tank of fuel they're not hard to maintain they're no different than uh, than anything else fuel filters uh, oil changes stuff like that so don't let being a diesel scare you away either they're just as easy as any gas job okay guys a uh, quick little uh, geek peek here for Walker's workshop I'm gonna talk a little bit today about on the subcompact tractors uh, how the hydraulic system works pardon my really crude drawings here um, hopefully I can get the point across though a real simple uh, going over of how the hydraulic system works and the difference uh, in a diesel between the horsepower and torque uh, of a gas job. So first, the hydraulic uh, system is pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot to it in these tractors. Now there's different types of system. Um, of course, something like a, like a big machine is going to have, it's going to be different than what's in these. And this is just general for most uh, subcompact tractors. So you have the, the engine running a shaft, a drive shaft. I guess they could be directly bolted up. You wouldn't necessarily have to have a shaft here connecting them. Um, but that's running uh, these gears in here, right? So this is your oil tank, and this is all filled with oil in here. And these little gears turn in a motion that sucks the oil out of the tank, right? And, and over here on the outlet, they're creating pressure and flow um, so there's a little difference there right so as the oil comes out it's coming down it's going to all the different valves you know on the tractor um, and, and there, there's a bunch of different valves we could talk about but if nothing is being used right and the tractor is just sitting there doing nothing just running with the engine running right you're not going to go past the valves you're going to the valves are going to direct the oil flow back into the tank and it's just going to just be circulating as the tractor as the engine's running as soon as you operate one of these valves right and so now you connect the oil flow that come out of the pump through the valve that you selected now it's going to go to your tools so i say tools i'm talking your the hydraulic cylinders or if you're running you know some sort of uh, hydraulic anything you know anything you have to plug the hydraulic lines into um, it's going to go through there and then once the oil goes through there it's used right and so you put the cylinder up the oil goes out 
and now you're putting the cylinder back in back down um, you know it's going in and out of your tool and it's going right back into the oil pump so it's just making a circle so it's either going here going to the valves and you're not being used it's bypassing into your cylinder into your oil reservoir where you're going through the valve around your tools whatever that may be and then back uh, into the oil reservoir so pretty simple it's just a circulating pump little gears in here um, that, that that spin around pull the oil out and uh, make pressure so another thing I see a lot is horsepower and like these new tractors these v-twin gas uh, powered tractors they're 25 horsepower which is pretty impressive compared to years and years ago we used to use seven horsepower tractors and 10 horsepower tractors. now we're beyond doubling um, where we used to be at and you would think that for a bigger tractor uh, like a subcompact um, the, you could do all these different functions you're going to need a lot more powerful engine but some of them are only rated at 18 horsepower um, mine just so happens to be uh, 25 it doesn't seem but that seems odd it doesn't seem right well the difference is the amount of torque that they make and these are a three cylinder I shouldn't say that mine is a three cylinder um, most of them are uh, I'm not sure. I think John Deere might be too. doesn't matter. So the important thing with the diesel is the amount of torque output, right? So if you're trying to spin these gears, uh, you, these are going to be really hard to turn because they're spinning really fast. They're drawing this oil. They're making a lot of pressure on, on, on the other end. So the way that torque is important, so with your engine, you have a crankshaft here. Of course, your connecting rod goes to your piston, which is going up and down. The largest, um, the, the most important factor that has to do with torque is the stroke of the crank that, that, that this piston is going up and down. So from the center line of your crankshaft out to where your connecting rod is, right, that's going to be your stroke length. The, the amount of distance that this piston goes up and down okay and you think well why what does that matter you know it's just just a distance right so it's very similar to a pry bar right you're, you're trying to pull a nail out of a two by four that's been stuck in there a really long time or whatever right so if you use this wee short little pry bar here that's only got a distance of we're just going to say for pry bar sake we're going to say you're using a six inch long pry bar that nail is going to be tough to get out of there so when you can't get that nail out of there you're pushing on it with all your might you can't get that nail out you're going to go you're going to get a bigger one now this guy is 12 inches now you have a big pry bar you can use that same amount of force and that nail just pops out easily you're putting the same amount of force down on it right but it's going to come out real easily that way with that longer pry bar. So same thing with the diesel engine, you have a longer stroke. So as this piston goes up and down, it's creating 25 horsepower, which is determined by airflow. Um, this guy's going to make torque and spin these gears much easier because it has a longer pry bar essentially on the engine. So, if you want to learn more you can google search or or let me know in the comments but that was just a quick little really rough deal um as far as uh how they work all right so i hope i cleared up a couple of things if uh, you guys are in the market for a subcompact or thought about getting one but maybe wasn't sure uh, i hope this video helped out um for those of you that already maybe have a subcompact tractor, uh, you guys can follow along. I'm going to be doing a lot of cool stuff with this thing. Got a bunch of projects coming down the line. Um, we're also going to be doing some modifications to it. Uh, I got some uh, fabrication, some welding fab projects to do with it. Um, maybe a little bit of cranking it up, see how bad we can abuse it. The warranty's up already, so uh, I do take care of it. 
keep it greased, keep it serviced. I'm not hard on it, but I definitely do test their limits. So uh, if that's something you want to follow along with, you know, hit the like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.